Hey folks, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this, all in the free version of Resolve. So when you think of people flying in movies and TV shows, you probably think of huge Hollywood studios on green screens and, well, not if you're Tom Cruise. He actually did that. But what do you do if you're not Tom Cruise and you don't have a huge Hollywood studio? Well, today we're going over two methods for doing green screen flying shots inside of Resolve. Using the color page for basic shots and fusion for stuff that's a little more advanced. So download the sample footage in the description, open up Resolve and follow along. And by the end of this video, you'll be doing green screen flying effects like a pro. But first, I'll let you in on a little secret. You know that thumbnail and the clip I showed at the beginning of this video? Totally a lie. We didn't shoot it on a green screen we actually shot it on a blue screen. Comment down below and tell me why you think we did that. Let's get into the tutorial. So here we are on the color page of DaVinci Resolve 16, and we just have the shot from Fuji X-T3 recorded externally to an Atomos. This is recorded in a log profile, and we're just gonna add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation just to help the separation of the blue and him. We're then gonna add a new node with Alt-S, and then we're gonna go into our qualifier tool. We're gonna to grab this blue and we can see it by enabling our highlight. Now we can touch up all the parts we missed and we're just gonna increase the width of our color that we're grabbing and it looks like we have pretty much everything. So now I'm gonna invert the selection with this little button over here. We're then gonna come out of highlight. We're going to right click, add alpha output and take our alpha channel and run that to the alpha output and boom just like that he's keyed out now we do want to clean up our black a little bit just to get rid of this blue fringing around the edge here and now we can go into the edit page and we can put something underneath them so we'll just drag our layer up and we're going to grab our image from graphics crate you can also use a video or whatever really you want to work with. And we just have this sky image behind him here. Links down in the description, though the free version is a lower resolution version. And to make it look a little more real, we can go into our effects, go into OFX. And then if you have the studio version of Resolve, you can use the lens blur, but Gaussian blur works fine. So we can just blur out this background behind him a little bit. We're going to go into our open effects. We're going to change our border type. Let's change it to replicate, just so it looks kind of real. And then we can just decrease the amount of blur, just so it looks a little bit out of focus behind him. And then we just want to color match him to the background a little bit better. Now we can go into the color page and make adjustments to the color in here. We can add a new node here with Alt S and start making some adjustments. But you may notice as we make these adjustments, we're going to cause problems for our key. So what we actually want to do is we want to delete this. I want to go into our edit page, right click and create a new compound clip. You can name it whatever you want. And then go into the color page with that clip. And now we can match it. Maybe just bump up our contrast a bit, bring our lift down a scooch, bring a little more saturation in to bring some life to his skin. And just like that, that looks pretty good. All done within the color page. So let's get a little more complex with it. So now we have the shot of him on blue screen lying on his back on some garbage cans. Hey, you work with what you got. But because of the way this shot's set up, we're actually gonna have to work in it in Fusion. But why? Well, let me show you. We'll go into the color page. And again, let's just add some of that contrast and some of that saturation. And just like before, we will select the blue in the shot. Boom, okay, it looks like we got pretty much everything. So then we're good to invert that selection, come out of highlight, and now we can add our alpha output and let's see what we get. Well, that's not great. Okay, now this isn't gonna work. Now we could fiddle around with some workarounds within the color page, but ultimately it's not meant for VFX, Fusion is. So we're gonna delete this node and then come back into the edit page. Now we can hop straight into Fusion and you can see right away that it's using the original clip and ignoring any of the color corrections that I've made while working in Fusion. It's also showing that it's a 4K clip. However, if we go into our project settings, into our master settings, you can see we're on a 1080 timeline because of computer limitations. So if it's gonna be too hard on our system to work with the 4K clip, what we can do is go back into the edit page. We're gonna right click, create new compound clip and name it whatever you want. And then if we go back into Fusion, you'll see that the color adjustments are applied and it's now a 1080 clip. So we can work on it with our system, easy peasy. So we wanna start by selecting our media in node and clicking shift spacebar on the keyboard, which brings up our toolbox, which has a handy search function down here. And we wanna look for the Delta gear. 
right here, DK Delta Gear. So with the Delta Gear selected, we're gonna go to our inspector and select our background color. We can just drag this little eyedropper over here and yeah, that looks like it's doing a pretty good job. And we can make it a bit better with our matte controls. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna increase our lower threshold until it starts to eat into our person. So you see how it's kind of eating away at a shoe there? So we wanna go just underneath that, just before it's starting to really eat away at that shoe. And then we're also gonna go over to our high threshold and just bring that down a little bit. You don't want it to kind of eat away at things. Just wanna bring it down just a scooch to bring parts back. So the great thing about doing this in Fusion is that there's so much flexibility in order to fix things, but we're just gonna keep it pretty much dead simple. But we have a problem here. Now you can actually see part of the bucket underneath him as well as everything else around him. If we zoom out here, that's what we don't want. So how do we fix that? Well, we wanna select our Delta gear. We then wanna hit Shift Spacebar on our keyboard and we wanna type in Poly for Polygon. So now we're gonna add this kind of polygon mask. So we wanna start by scrubbing through a clip and just kind of see what his motion looks like throughout the shot. So it looks like his arm doesn't go any further than this point and his feet don't really move anywhere. So we should be good. So then we just wanna draw around him and you can see I'm just quickly going around here. Super duper simple. I do wanna get in close kind of on his backside here just to help get rid of that shadow on the bucket that was giving us some problems earlier. Give him some space around the feet, not too much. And we can just finish this off. So this isn't what we want. Well, we wanna go in and invert this mask here. And now we're getting what we want. So now we wanna deselect this and then we wanna drag it into the Delta gear, but we wanna hold in Alt or Option on our keyboard when we do it. We then drag it on and we actually have some options on where we want it to go. And we want this to be our garbage mat. So what that does is it basically selects, this is the only area that we want to work with. Everything else is garbage. So don't worry about it. So now we get this as our final result, which is much better. We don't see that kind of thing on his butt there, or it's much better. And we can actually go in and clean it up. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that's looking way better. There we go. And then we can just zoom out, go back to the Delta key here, and yeah, that looks great. So now that we have them keyed out, we're actually gonna go back into the edit page and we can see as the render cache starts to form here, you see this red line, it's going to turn blue. So now the cache is rendered so we can play through the clip, no problems at all, and it looks pretty not too bad. So now we gotta put them in the sky. Let's drag our clip up and we're gonna bring down our shot of our sky here for behind him. And then we're also going to bring in this cloud above him. And to make this cloud match, we're just gonna quickly go into the color page. And to get to match super simple, we're just gonna get rid of some of this purple pink up here. So we're gonna put in the opposite color in our offset and then drag down our saturation quite a bit to get it looking much closer to these clouds back here. Maybe we can darken it a little bit. So then we'll go back into the edit page. We're going to select all our clips, right click and create a new fusion clip. And initially you may think, oh no, I ruined my clip. Don't worry about it. Just go into Fusion and everything will be okay. So first off, we need to get everything organized and figure out what the heck everything is. So we can click our Media In 3, press one on our keyboard, and we see that's the cloud. This is our actor, and this is our background. So if we click on our node, press F2 on the keyboard, you can now rename it. And you could to click OK there just to help us stay organized. So we have our sky in back, our actor on top of our sky, and then our cloud on top of our actor, as you can see here. Well, how do we get them to move? Well, what we do is we select the node that we want to move, and then we hit Shift, Spacebar on our keyboard, and then we type in Transform for our Transform node, and we can just add that in, and now we get to move it around, like we'll move this cloud around here. Let's just put this down at the bottom for now. And then we want to go in our actor again, shift space bar. It's got our transform already ready to go. Good to add that. And we just want to move our actor around a little bit. So what we want to do is first off, we want to definitely make him smaller in the frame and we want him falling down. Now we can change our angle, but I want him kind of facing the same way. So an easy way to do that is we just flip it and boom. Now he looks like he's falling down. So let's go to the beginning of the clip here. And what we want to do is we want to place him at the very top. And we can do that with our sliders within the inspector. However, you can also just grab it 
and take it to where you want it. So we're just gonna make him a little bit smaller here and just take him all the way up to the top so it's like he's gonna fall through the frame. And then we're gonna start keyframing, so be sure to click your little diamond here. And then we're gonna go forward, let's say 10, ah, let's go with 12 frames and he's gonna be down at the bottom. So we're just gonna take our slider, drag it all the way down, perfect. Yeah, we can move this cloud out of the way a little bit. Just kind of at the bottom. We'll have some fun with that later. So if we watch that back, we can see that it looks pretty terrible, kind of frame by frame. We can even go into the edit page, wait for the cache to render, and we can play it. And yeah, that looks pretty darn atrocious. And you want to know why? It's because there's no motion blur on them. So I'm just going to shorten this up a little bit. We're going to go back into Fusion and get that fixed up. What we want is we want to go into our transform node for our actor here. We then want to go into our settings in our inspector and we want to apply motion blur. Right off the bat, you can see it's kind of looking better. I find in a situation like this, the blurrier the better because he's literally falling through the sky. He should be pretty darn blurry because he's moving so darn fast. So by default, the quality is set to two. And as we scroll through here, it doesn't look great. There's a really obvious doubling effect, which just doesn't look like motion blur from a camera. But as we increase it, you notice the amount of doublings increases and around five or so, it gets to a point where you really can't even tell. Maybe we can increase it a bit more, but that actually is starting to look like pretty natural motion blur. So now if we check that out, we get something that looks like this. And that looks much better. So it's getting us closer, but we need to add some finishing touches. So we want to add some motion to the background because it seems fairly static right now, like he's almost on a set or in front of a picture, like he is. So what we're going to do is we want to increase the size of our sky and we just want to start it off so that it's all the way up at the top here. We then want to enable our keyframes, then go all the way to the end. And we want to drag this sucker up so that it looks like it's moving more or less. Okay. So now we get this nice movement throughout the shot and we can enable our motion blur a little bit, just to add a little extra blurriness to that sky. And then we want this cloud to swallow them. So I'm just gonna make a little more space here so that we can kind of go into our cloud or in our transform node, and we want this to swallow them. So we want it to kind of come up from the bottom and to eat them. So we wanna start all the way at the bottom here. Maybe we can increase the size of our cloud a little bit, enable our keyframes, and then go all the way to the end. And we want him to be kind of eaten by this cloud. And if we check that out in the edit page, you'll see what we get like this. Perfect. So it's super fast and he just kind of falls and gets eaten by a cloud like so. And if we want, we can go into our effects, add an adjustment clip on top here, go into our open effects, go down and maybe make the camera move a little bit. So we just want to add our camera shake on top of this sucker. So we get kind of a cool camera shake effect for a super fast shot. And you can see this effect in full display in my latest music video link in the description. And just like that flying green screen, well in this case, blue screen effects inside of DaVinci Resolve easy peasy. Let me know down in the comments what you want me to cover in the future and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, have yourself a good one. Bye.